this is the first for this channel. My name is Amber and I am the Witch of Nagalula on YouTube and also on Instagram. And as the description of this vlog channel says, I live on a mountain in North Alabama. And it's morning, it's just after eight. I've already watered. What I'm showing here actually is a very spent meadow as the last little bit that's left of my meadow. And you can see that we mow the perimeter of the meadow. We mow like right through what were three hickories. We recently had a tornado on Nakalula last month, almost to the date. Yesterday was the month anniversary of the tornado on Nakalula Mountain summer 2023 and it took out my largest hickory so I did have three hickories there I do not now this is a meadow that I created and you can tell this part right here was the part that I had actually tilled up and put down seeds that I got from Prairie Moon Prairie Moon is a plant nursery that sells native indigenous flora to your region and you can search your region and find what sort of seed mix or they also sell plugs like let's say if you want to put in a plant plug like a already started plant maybe a few months old or a year old that they've started in the greenhouses you could order a tray of those as well i did the seeds and I got a lot of black eyed Susies that you can see are spent and notice I didn't deadhead them. I haven't trimmed the meadow yet because we've got a lot of songbirds. I have lots of goldfinches and I had an indigo bunting. Indigo bunting likes the gamma grass and the gamma grass is that really tall stuff right there in the distance if you can see. And again, I'm just doing this on my Android right now. So I apologize if the quality is not as great. You can see this is Maryland Meadow Beauty. Meadow Beauty naturally comes up all over the mountain. I've added a lot of beautiful things like native salvias and sages. I've added the blue asters right there. I have lots of clusters of blue asters coming up. And I do have some long leaf sunflowers coming up some at some points in the yard. You can see there's lots of Meadow Beauty. But this was magnificent <laughs> earlier and I still have lots of little wildflowers just cropping up. I had some prairie blazing stars. I have different types of all sorts of wildflowers like bellflowers and salvias. Salvias, you know, are wild, wild sages. I have St. John's wort, St. Andrew's cross, even things that I've left like this horseweed right here. And there are brambles and sometimes the invasive privet that comes up, which is why you can see I've selectively weed whacked a lot of the meadow. Like there's some bramble right there that I need to get up. And I love the dog fennel, but dog fennel, I've had quite a lot of dog fennel. So I've been, I've had to selectively trim or pull up the dog fennel too. But you can go to my Instagram at the witch of Nakalula. Nakalula is spelled N O C C A L U L A. I know it's a doozy. You can go to my Instagram and you can see pictures when it was in the height of its glory, and I will miss it, but I am so ready for autumn. I think the tornado really did it in for me. <laughs> the summer, um, it was quite traumatic. I saw it, watched it all from my bedroom window. My husband got stuck out in it. He was stuck in the car. So he got a 360 degree view of it. And it was, it was scary. So also we had no warning either. We've never had a tornado on the mountain. So that right there is unusual climate change. It's unfortunately affecting every area of the globe right now, including Appalachia. You can see that this is a little spot that I did not cultivate. I did not plant anything intentionally here. I kind of let it go wild and I have some camphor weed, looks like some joe pie weed, a type of gold rod coming up and late bone set and more of that meadow beauty. And my willows have already dropped their leaves so you can't see them but I had mountain mint 
the side my willows so I've had a great selection that's where my tree fell a lot of that was already selectively weed whacked though again I've constantly been fighting the bramble now coming around this way you can see where I've added last year I did vegetables here but I decided this year to oh here's some st. John's wort right here just popping up by the gamma grass which I left because the gamma grass was actually what the indigo bunting indigo buntings love they like these little seeds right here whatever these are called on this so yeah leave your gamma grass let it come up in, in little um, stalks or what they call bundles we'll call it bundles like that sorry my glasses fell off my face little bundles like that and you'll get lots of songbirds it's amazing so this right here is late bone set and you can see it looks totally lush and different than what it does this is this is the rose or the swamp milkweed and I've only seen one monarch but I've had so many butterflies they'll come out earlier when the sun's out Oh, we have so many butterflies. I may have to sneak back out here and take a video, but they're, they're, they're kind of like up in your business because <laughs> this is their place now. So this is late bone set. And you can see how different it looks when you actually put it in a bed and sort of treat it like a cultivated plant. It, it, it's quite it's a beautiful, beautiful addition. And these, the late bone set was really tall, but you can see the tornado when it came through, it blew it over. But it's still alive, so I'm just leaving it. I also have, I put out these little terracotta um, things for bees, and I fill it with water so the little pollinators can have water and they won't drown. And of course, I have this little one right here for hummingbirds. This is my my little beneficial wasp and bee. Mainly, it's a bee, a little bee home for it. individual bees, solitary bees, and I have lots of interesting bees and wasps I've never seen before. But my favorite, I have to say would be the common eastern bumblebee, the little cute fuzzy guys. I have pictures and videos of, of them sleeping on my, my herbs, like my savory, and it's so wonderful. This is spotted bee mint, and it's just a fantastic, fantastic, just beautiful plant, beautiful herbaceous native herb, and all the pollinators love it. They all just love it. I've seen lots of like blue wasp and beneficial bees and stuff on here, like our native bees. But I have so much in here. I even put some cultivars of like blue suede salvia for the hummingbirds because I still have lots of hummingbirds. I know it's September, but I'm in Alabama and the growing season will go through or go into October. So sometimes some people, some of the little boogers, they don't leave until October. So, you know, I have to be, I have to take that into account. This is actually marsh the marshmallow and I'll show you one of the last blooms it's a native wetland plant and it's called rose marshmallow and I actually got these as little bitty plants little plugs from prairie moon and I'll link prairie moon in the description I got this a couple years ago now so and over here of course this is bee balm but you can see the marshmallow has grown this is the marshmallow see the leaves on there has grown with the bee balm and that's more bee balm right in front of it so they kind of both went wild and i just let them go wild and down here i had catnip and cat mint because i love catnip and cat mint but i keep them in the beds this is my joe pie weed some of my joe pie weed i had some more over there in the pollinator bed but it's spent the camphor weed is coming up now this has been beautiful. The hummingbirds are now enjoying this because it's a late bloomer. It's azure blue salvia. It's a native, native sage. Herbaceous plant that pollinators adore. And I think there's a little moth or something sleeping. But I have so many, you can see, I just let it go because it was kind of struggling. Look, there's one of my eastern. Look, look, see? See the little, there he is. There's a little pollen on his feet down there. See if I can get a good view of him. That's one of our native bumblebees. And he is a cutie poop. Look at that little butt. Wait, where are you? Oh, did you disappear in the flower? Oh, there he is right there. Look at that baby. But he is really cute. I hear hummingbird behind me. So maybe we'll get lucky and we'll see a hummingbird. 
Oh my goodness, we just have so many babies here. This is some pineapple sage, it hasn't bloomed because it really probably should be in the ground. I just don't have a place for it now, so I'm probably gonna have to winter it and trim it back. Um, I did have some cone flowers in here, but everything else, the native just took off. This is a little fire pit right here. But this, this is my echinacea. And I have had so many goldfinches on this plant because see, I don't deadhead. This is basically that black niger seed that you can buy, but this is, but they prefer to eat it off of the plant. So just leave it on there, it's a lot fresher. Don't deadhead your native plants. Like I didn't deadhead my meadow. There's some gray cone flower right there. They like that. And I'm showing you all this spent because it's, it's food. It's food for little babies. Songbirds, <laughs> there's been a lot of misinformation out there. The number one reason, number two reasons that their populations are declining is lack of habitat. We've encroached on their habitat and you don't see these in yards. You don't see meadows like that. They need meadows. They need those liminal spaces between the woodlands and places that they're gonna travel. And we can create those spaces again by just putting in native flora and not having so many lawns. No one needs a golf course lawn, but we've created a, a society where that's what we just do and we don't just leave space for everything that's native. Another reason that songbirds are decreasing, declining population would be light pollution. They slam into cities, they cross over big cities and their little natural compass <laughs> gets off, their sense of direction, and they, uh, they slam into buildings and die. They get exhausted flying around, losing their way. This is my savory, and I'm showing you this because I, my bumblebees would sleep on this at night. That savory right there. And of course, these are herbs that we cook with, and yes, there's a lot of grass coming up in between those. I have not weeded because I still have bees out here, and I'm just going to let them finish up for the season before I really get out here, like I said, and start deadheading. So, there's a little booger in there. Did you see that booger? Look at him. He's so cute. There's somebody in there. Oh, my goodness. Look at that face. Oh, my goodness. It's a boogie. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Was that a honeybee? I don't know what kind of bee that was. But. It has been so fantastic watching all these guys. I'm sorry, I just got excited and swiveled. I apologize. But that, that, that's bee balm. And I've also seen song birds on the bee balm. They like to eat the seeds there too. So I just sort of left everything, y'all. Just left it and I tend to it still. Obviously I water, I take care of it, but I'm not deadheading or doing final weed right now because everyone's still desperate to get nourishment for migrations and whatnot. So I'm going to end here and create another one. And I hope you've enjoyed my meadow. I apologize if this has been so long. I've been rambling, but like I said, I'm getting so used to this. I hope that you find some milkweed. I hope that you see monarchs or whatever butterflies you have in your area. Um, and I wish you a happy day.